Friday edition of Gonzaga Nation SI. That means uh, it's Rob Sacre, myself, Jack Ferris. And it's a special Friday because we're bringing on Dan Dickow. Good morning to Dan Dickow. Good morning, fellas. Uh, bright and early. I know uh, you wanted to go even earlier. I apologize. I couldn't make that one work. But uh, it's a good Friday uh, to talk Zag Hoops. And I know you guys get off on a little different uh, tangents than than Mo and I. So I'm excited for the uh, conversation, see where you guys lead it. <laughs> yeah, first things first here. You couldn't join us earlier because you drop your kids off uh, at school at 8.30 in the morning, which is a responsible thing to do. Yes. You're about to have another child. What number are we talking here, Dan? What's your number? Uh, I've got six kids. My my seventh will be born uh, very soon in the next few weeks. So You might pass uh, on camp. For most kids. <laughs> oh, I won't go there. My mine are my, my kids are in a little different realm as far as <laughs> but I'm, I know, I know, but you you have the same number of kids, I believe. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is uh so John Stockton has six kids and uh we were talking on the phone a few months back when 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 we finally got to that point where we were telling people that that my wife was due, and I said, John I finally beat you in something. He looks at me, he, he goes, what'd you beat me at? You know, cause, uh, cause yeah, that's kind of a weird comment to make on a phone call. He, I go, I've got a seventh on the way. He goes, Oh, okay. Good job. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> When's the due date? Uh, well, the due date's mid March, but uh, all signs are pointing. It's going to be a little sooner. So, um, you know, it's a, it's going to make March madness a little interesting in our house with the, uh, broadcasting responsibilities and, and everything going on there. So um, everything's good. Everything's healthy. We're looking forward to it. You're are like you gonna, those, he's ahead, like Rob. one of those old settlers that are just making babies just in case one goes or something like that. Well, yeah. Like yeah like making well, babies. you know, Rob, we both live on the north side. So maybe that means I get a, uh, you know, what's it, stake a claim to the land of yours right. that's right. like two miles away from my house. Right. You need to supplement your workforce by having more kids. That's all it is. You're, yeah. It's just cheap labor coming out of your wife. God bless your wife. One thing you're uh, um, trailing Sean Kemp behind is baby mamas. Yeah. Yes, well, I'm, I'm 100% you know. glad that that is the case. <laughs> that will stay the case. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> all right. That's not a bad segue. So Gonzaga smacked Pacific last night. Uh, not a shocker to anyone. My question to you guys, you alluded to it. Both of you live in Spokane. There's a number of former Zags that live in Spokane. Could you have gotten together seven, eight former Zags last night and beat Pacific? Wow. Uh, yeah, I know you sent that text message uh, kind of to prep some questions. I mean, I, I know I know some of us are still, you know, somewhat in shape. Uh, I'm trending back in the getting in shape stage right now. I don't know about Rob, but if you look at the former players, you know, Rob's here, I'm here, Moe's here as former NBA players, and we've got a lot of other really good guys that have played high level in Europe that are living here, but we're not 21, 22 years old get, being able to get up and down the floor anymore. So I'm going to take the political correct answer and say no. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, okay, <laughs> you guys may not be what you once were. That's fine. Yeah, and many of you are on the wrong side of forty. That's how that's how time works. But Pacific how old is Rob sucks. now? Rob, what are you? Thirty two. Thirty two. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, I'm forty three now. I still feel like I'm younger than you know most people. I mean, I I got carded the other day buying a, a bottle of wine still, what? and I'm like, dude, I got gray hair. I've got I've got kids in tow that are like 11 years old. Come on, Dan Dickow gets carded in Spokane. I do. I wow, do. That's humbling. It is. I okay. That's all fine, well and good, but we're talking about former NBA players, Zag players that live in Spokane, and we're talking about the Pacific Tigers, Dan. I think it could have been close. You think it could have been close? Oh, no, not a chance. What do you think, Rob? No, not a chance. They didn't even have a guy over, what, 6'5"? There we go. See, Rob's not afraid to, to make a statement there, Dan. You see that? And that's why I love having you guys part of the uh, Gonzaga <laughs> Nation SI because, you know, I kind of play that political correct down the middle-ish stuff. I don't. Because I, I won't you, probably, back. <laughs> you may have to go call a Pacific game at some point. I will. You know, we had Leonard Perry on uh, the other day. I, I had a conversation with him for about 12 minutes that we released. He's a good dude. Uh, you know, he's just in a tough spot. That Pacific job, <laughs> that's a tough one. And and I, that's why I was so impressed with the job Damon Stoudemire did. Mm -hmm. 
And and Damon and I had talked a number of years, a, a number of times over his time in Stockton. I'm like, what's your end game? And he wouldn't, he would hem and haw about it. But I knew in the back of his mind, his goal was to get the Arizona job. And when Tommy Lloyd got that, you know, I was like, all right, I think it's a matter of time before he goes to the NBA. And lo and behold, a few weeks, a few months later, he is back in the NBA. I mean, that that's where his skill set, I think, as a coach is best fit for. Um, but that being said, he did a great job in Stockton while he was there. Uh, yeah, but again, it's still Stockton. And yeah, it, in his mind, okay, they hire Tommy Lloyd. He's going to be there for at least three years. You know what I mean? I couldn't imagine signing up for another three years in Stockton. All due respect to uh, Stockton, California. Um, all right. Rob says you guys smack the Tigers of Pacific. Oh, one I do as well. Okay. Dan's out. Dan's yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to say it's, a, it's, it's, it's I, I will agree with Rob because there are enough younger guys that I will say that we we would we would we would win that game, but you know that is uh, we would have to get in shape and have a quick training camp. How's that, Rob? I'll That's give you fair. three days. Three days. Yes. Well, I Rob's wearing the uh, well. I can't call it what no, most people normally would call that tank. Top. <laughs> I can't call that right now. But uh, you know, Rob looks in great shape right now. I'm getting. I'm trending in that direction. Yeah. We can Are do you? It. Are you slimming down right now, Dan? Well, I'm I'm on the uh, the dry January has kicked in for me, oh. um, and it and it's stayed in that direction. I think I've had a, a one night of uh, of some adult beverages in the new year, just because yeah. uh, got a little one on the way. Uh, I've got a big broadcasting kind of schedule, and I wanted to be at my best, and I want to be at my best for you guys this morning. Oh wow! So we we appreciate wow. you not boozing last night. I was drinking for all three of us. <laughs> um, moving on, uh, Olympics are here. Nobody cares. And before uh, let's do that first, Dan, I imagine, you know, the Dick out household is a sporty household. Do you guys have the Olympics on nonstop right now? Yes. Yes. Um, really? Oh, we get a figure skating. Exactly. Rob's right. Because uh, my daughters are figure skaters. So, uh, my, my oldest daughter, Claire, uh, she got our family into figure skating and my 13 year old daughter, Emma, um, she's got a goal to be in the Olympics and represent team USA. And, and, wow. you know, every parent is proud of their kids and they're, you know, sometimes have kid centric goggles thinking their kids are better than they really are. Um, but my daughter's made nationals at figure skating at her level, uh, two separate years. She is kind of in the, uh, the, the phase where it's not unrealistic to say that she could represent USA at some point. Now the Olympics is every four years, so you got to be perfect at the at the right time. Um, there's multiple international competitions that you know. Hopefully, at some point, she gets to represent the country. I uh, have you because don't take this the wrong way. You look like a hockey player, Dan. Have you gotten that before? No, I no. And here's my hockey story, and this goes back to John Stockton again. So every Christmas season, John Stockton will rent out. Uh, Eagles Ice Arena here in Spokane. This yeah. year it was in Coeur d'Alene. Um, and he'll have like a, a, a fa- friends and family night where there's figure skating, there's a hockey on one side. So two years ago, um, we were able to go. I took, I think I took two of my daughters and, and my son. We went. And uh, my daughters always want to see me on the ice because it's, it's like, it's bad. I can't skate at it's all. It's funny to watch dad look like a... Yeah, so yeah, I played hockey. I got in the game for about five minutes. I fell and I broke my wrist. No. Yeah. Ooh. Which wrist? My left wrist. And okay. uh, the funny thing about it is my my kids were so excited to see me on the ice and how bad I was that they were filming it on my phone. And they caught oh, they my got fall. the whole thing? They <laughs> caught my fall on my phone. And KHQ, I, I gave them, I showed Heister and, and, and Foxy and our producer Chauncey, and they put it on air a couple oh. days later because I had a splint on my arm with, uh, with the game, and uh, we put it, they put it on air. I was like, thanks, guys. Christian, can we grab that video at some point? Can you snag that from Dan? Spice it in. <laughs> I already know it's a yes. I already I'm going to have to yes. find it, but yeah, I'll send it to him. So, but Rob's a, Rob's a Canadian. Right. So yeah, we practiced. Where, where, ho- we did. We did street hockey. We did street hockey, and uh, I saw. I saw Canadian women. We just beat Sweden by eleven nil. 
in goals. That's a, that's a that's a beat down. But your your fellow Canadian big man Todd McCulloch, who was a friend of mine, teammate at UW, he was a hockey player growing up. You, you never played got with him at UW, Mount yeah. McCulloch. Todd's my guy. Todd is world ranked in pinball. Yes, he I've is. heard that. Yes, He's he is. Unbelievable. So he came when he was working in the NBA with the Sixers as a radio analyst. I had just torn my Achilles, and so I was back home for the rest of the season. And that Christmas, my wife bought me Lord of the Rings pinball. And you know, Rob, when you're coming back from an injury, you're bored as heck. You got nothing yeah. to do. I was playing pinball for like five hours a day. And Todd was on a road trip and he came by and we played, we had a, like a couple hour pinball session and he tutored me on pinball, like all the intricacies of what to do, how to do it. It blew my mind. I had no idea there's like a philosophy on how to get good at pinball and how to beat certain games. Didn't, I didn't, yeah, totally. I thought uh, pinball was a game of chance, not a game of skill. But no, then I heard it, it, on a podcast a that skill. Tom, Tom McCullough is like top 50 or something in the world what yeah, yeah. insane where's like mo in that mix well you know mo goes to those uh the pinball arcades on the road all the time is what he's told me i haven't seen i haven't seen him in action i know he's got a number of pinball machines at his house i've just got the one right right by you right down the street from usf is there a really? good one yeah um tom mccola real quick his career ended because he had bad feet isn't that right he had a nerve issue in his feet. Yeah, I think it's called like Marie Charcot syndrome. Um, I, I last I talked to him was uh, maybe uh, eight nine months ago. Um, so yeah, that's that's why his career ended. Now, did you have Coach Jack at UW too? Yes and no. So here's a short story. Coach Jack Aletti recruited me in high school, and I committed to University of Washington because of Coach Jack Aletti. And then he went the August. So a month before I get on campus, he got his first head coaching job opportunity at North Dakota. Uh, he headed uh, out, and so that was the coach that would have had my back and had my corner as a freshman. He was gone. Um, but, yeah, we've stayed in touch. He's one of the best. Yeah. I'm sure you've got some great Coach oh, Jack Oh, I got Coach stories. Jack stories. I definitely have Coach Jack stories. Yeah. Before yeah. we move on, back to ice skating, have you seen the cutting edge, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> more, yeah. times, more times than I'd yes. like to admit to. <laughs> I feel vindicated because Rob's never even heard of it, which no. should surprise nobody. I really? love cutting Rob? edge. And you, you look like a DB Sweeney type, Dan. And that's a big compliment. Who's DB Sweeney? Bro, he's the guy. He's I see. The I, don't, I just know the movie. I don't know like the 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 actor. He doesn't sit he's down and character. watch this movie religiously. He said he's seen it more times to count. Yeah, but he's not. He, 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 as a dad, you just kind of zone out. Watching. Yeah, Rob's right. There are times that you just kind of zone out. And I, I'll, I've fallen asleep to it before. There it is, oh. DB Sweeney. Okay. Am I right or am I wrong? I look like DB Sweeney. Pull up, pull up like uh, like early '90s DB. Okay, because I was gonna like say the one in the middle. You're or the one in the middle. You're kind of. Uh... Well, he's like <laughs> 60 years old, I, but early '90s. There we go. Is that not Dan Dickow? Come on. Oh my. God. Come on. Am I right or wrong? Can you Google DB Sweeney cutting edge, Christian? There, there, there's a, oddly enough, there's a lot of uh, comparisons. No, no, there's a lot of ice skating movies out there. I never would have thought that. Uh, you mean besides the Will yeah, Ferrell one and cutting, cutting edge? edge? Yeah. <laughs> there's an know. Ice Princess. There's uh, there's one that uh, makes fun of ice skating, and it's hilarious. I'm going to have to send it to you guys. It's it's inappropriate for kids because it makes a lot of jokes in it, but I can't remember the name of it, but it's pretty good. You're not talking about the Will Ferrell movie? No, that one's, that one's hilarious too. Okay. We're going to skate uh, to one song and one song only. <laughs> what's the song? You left me hanging there. Have <laughs> you seen the movie? He's I have not, for, not for, What is it? Blades, Blades of, of Glory. glory. Yeah. No, Blades of Glory, but what's the song they they dance to? Isn't it Rock of Ages? Is that what it is? I don't know. It's been, it's been, a, it's been I, I a tip. I don't know the name of the song. I know it off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, all right, we're moving on. When's the last time when's the last time Rob or you have been on skates? Oh, dude. I that, remember at KXLY we were doing something at the the Eagle Ice Arena. And I was like, oh, yeah, for my live shot, I'll definitely be on skates and we'll have the cameraman off and, you know, you'll do like a slow zoom. 
And I didn't practice all day because I was just confident that I would be able to pull it off. And there were about three minutes to show time. And I put on the skates and step on the ice. And I'm, I'm like, no way. I can't move. Yeah. I hadn't because before that, it had probably been 15 years. Okay. And yeah, I, that that was it for me. Never again. Yeah, I haven't been back on the ice since I broke my wrist. And, and I have no plans to either. Uh, there, there, there's no, no reward. High risk, yeah. zero reward. 100%. Rob, you? Uh, probably, heavy. I would have to say with that Stockton, when Stockton rented out the ice rink, that was you the last time. I, yeah, that was the, have you guys done the outdoor one? No. The one uh-huh. downtown? I've always Oh, wanted the ice that. ribbon? I, I, wanted, I wanted to try that just once. Hey, Rob, with you being Canadian, have you ever done curling? Because I was up. I have in, done curling. I, I've been up in, uh, I was in, I think, Winnipeg or Calgary doing a clinic, basketball clinic, and we had like hours to kill. We went to lunch, and then at this golf course that, that we had lunch, it was a curling arena. They had like 12 lines or whatever they're called. Really? And I was like, I've got to try that. And that was, it was the most fun. But it's also the most frustrating because it is hard. It, it's yeah. just shuffleboard with 50 pound rocks. You know, like what it, those rocks are heavier than you expect. Stones, stones, stones my that's man. Right. Stones. My, my, my bad. My bad. I love curling. I've never stones done it. Sweepers. You've never done it? I've never done it. No. Oh, you need to try it out, Jack. I'd like to be a sweeper, but I, I would fall for sure and like kick our stone and then I'd be kicked off the team. Um, speaking of team, I asked you guys to pick an Olympian, a winter Olympian on the current Zag roster. Were you able to do it? Go ahead, Rob. See, I'm thinking Anton Speed Skater. Oh, I like that. No. I actually like that. I think he would actually be a really good speed skater. Those are the bad boys of skating for sure. They like are. Paulo they- Anton Ono types. Yep. Yep uh that's that that might be better than mine you want to go dan wow speed skater um that's an interesting one you know the i uh, if if and or um, if balo was still on the team i would say he would be a goalie in hockey because <laughs> he's such a big dude um i think i think timmy is our best he's just crazy enough that he'd be a good goalie yeah, he'd probably have one of those masks that yeah. just kind of just provided a fierce look yep. to the opponent. Um, or just the old school, like Michael from Halloween mask. Right. Like that's yeah. all he would wear. That's all he would need. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go like, uh, what is it? The 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 long, the ski jump, the long jump where uh-huh. you get going. Uh-huh. I'm going to go like a Regier Bolton because I, I see him as being super quick. And he like can fit in in narrow spaces in transition, and, and it seems like he's got great balance. I would think you'd have to have great balance to do that. So I'm gonna go Rajir Bolton with the ski jump. I saw that one time in Vancouver in 2010, and it is beyond impressive. Um, How far do they go? I, I don't know. Far as hell. Meters. It's been quite some time, in but meters. it's it seeing it in person is insanity. Um, all right. I'm picking Marty Orlowskis. Oh, no, no, quite. I thought yeah. about oh, that. Yeah, I mean, Lithuania, they, they probably have a lot of uh, winter sports over there. Ready? Biathlon. <laughs> skiing, skiing and shooting. Because he probably grew up skiing and shooting to survive. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, biathlon skills probably come second nature to old Marty. And I think he would thrive on the biathlon scene. I, have either of you ever cross-country skied? Yes. I Do you enjoy it? It's one of the – it's like being on an elliptical the whole time. That's where the elliptical comes from. Oh, is that right? Because you're just constant. You're, you're just you're, – everybody is – part is moving. See, I sense. can't I've, – I've never done that. Um, I used – I have got into skiing a little bit, but I was, I was the worst skier in the world. Like my wife got into it, and she was really good. She would – we'd go up, and she hated skiing with me because she was so much better than me. She'd go – black diamonds and i'm like nah you know i kind of like this blue over here Mm -hmm. yeah so i wasn't fun to ski with but my problem was i was scared to get hurt and rob you could probably attest to this because you had surgeries right yeah you i it once you done playing you don't want to do anything that might have another surgery on the horizon it just i don't want to be in pain sucks yes it sucks 
Yeah, and I I mean I've had enough surgeries to know that I don't want to deal with that rehab again. Amen <laughs> to that. I mm, I went snowboarding one time. It's just not for me. I'm a California kid who has been snowboarding one time and surfing one time. It's a disgrace, and I blame my parents. So um, what you, what, what, what's your extracurriculars, Jack? Dude, I used to run, and then I screwed my back up. Now I can't run. Um, I don't really have anything, Dan. It's the worst in terms of, like, I mean, golf. But even with a bad back, like, I'll screw my back up, and I'm out for six months. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's horrifying. Uh I'm a big, I was a big elliptical guy, but after doing it for like a year and a half, like my body didn't change at all. But I guess at this age, maybe I'm just maintaining. Maybe that's just all it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I used to run. Oh, actually, I don't know if I've told Rob this. I've gotten into rowing, not like on water, but. It's like the the machine. The machine. Yeah, dude. You can get after it on the old row machine. And this is exciting. Yeah. 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 Low impact. Lame, just oh like me. Are you like the Winklevoss twins now? Like you just daily in the. I wish, yeah, hell yeah. The Winklevi is that what they called them? The Winklevi. Um, I am a twin too. Fun fact. Are you really? I am. Um, Valentine's Day, fellas. What are the plans for the ladies? Ooh. Can we say it? See here, every day is they're Valentine's not watching day for me. There it is. Valentine's Day. For oh, me. you're putting me in a bad spot, Rob, by saying but, that. But it, no, let's call it what it is. Valentine's Day was set up by women. Whoever created this holiday wanted us, or it, wh- how is it a holiday? Christian, look it up. We need to look up how is this a holiday? Well, there's St. Valentine, who was a and, dude. And what did he do? He just simped around all day. And Every just, year was a new girl to simp on. Uh, what? Let me ask you this. What was the best Valentine's gift you guys have ever received? I've never received a good Valentine's gift in my life. There it is. And there's the problem. There's See, the I don't problem. know. I mean, with, with kids, we just give our kids, you know, uh, an candy. extra set of candy or a present that day. You know, I actually, I've got to fly down to to cover a game on Tuesday night. So I got to fly out on, on Monday on Valentine's Day. So um, the life of a broadcaster at this time of year, in and out of town. Uh, at school right now, what are the – do kids still give Valentine's cards to everybody? Because um, I know some kids would have candy attached. Some kids would just have the card. Is it mandatory still? Is it not allowed in schools anymore? I don't know how schools handle Valentine's Day because it used to be a good day. Yeah, I remember it used to be a good day. But I think right now my wife ordered stuff weeks ago. We do everything online now. I mean, we yeah. didn't even pre-COVID because – don't want to, I hate going into stores and doing too much stuff, but um, we, my wife ordered all this stuff early and it's already ready to go to, for our kids to take to school. But I believe it's like, they're just doing this year, like those little, what are those little heart chalky, like heart candies, the tiny ones? Yeah. Uh, little- I love those. Yeah. You either love or hate you, them. The Neko cute. hearts. Yeah. You're cute. Yeah. You be are mine. Cute, be mine. Mm-hmm. But I think they've had to change to be politically correct. Some of those. I'm sure phrases i'm sure yeah that's a bummer hmm. uh are you guys a fan of those nickel wafer situations i like those candies yeah yeah me too me too <laughs> rob looks like he's out <laughs> i like the chocolate man yeah dark chocolate or milk chocolate milk chocolate oh dark the chocolate's milk. healthy rob Come that's on. i know i know get your uh, antioxidants in dark <laughs> chocolate's healthy it is yeah, healthier, that, healthier. Well, that's, no, it's healthy. And a glass of wine is about as healthy as you can get for. Yeah, a you night. might as well, you might as well be chewing on celery with a glass mm. of wine and and dark chocolate. It's healthier than milk chocolate. There's no way it's healthy. It is healthy. Dark it chocolate is healthy. healthy. No, it's not. Heart. You guys are using the wrong word. It's he- it's healthier, right? No, it's healthy. It's actually healthy. I I, I can't I can't endorse. It's that. just like a uh, whiskey. Whiskey in moderation is healthy too. But not, got drink, not okay, okay, okay. Your body is better off having zero dark chocolate than it is having a little bit of dark chocolate. That's my stance. No, <laughs> dark chocolate is good for you. I would also say your body is healthier having zero whiskey than having a little bit of whiskey once a week. 
That's debatable, right, Rob? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can agree with that. Like it flushes out your system, it cleans you out. Is that the argument? Hey, what the whiskey? The, the whiskey. It makes you I mental stress. I get mental health. I there guess. You go. You okay, go mental with that. health. Mental health. I can I can sign off on. Uh, he's Dan Dickow. He's Rob Sacre. I'm Jack Ferris. Christian on the ones and twos. Uh, this is Gonzaga Nation SI Friday edition with Sack and Jack. Any parting words, boys? Oh, happy Valentine's Day, y'all. Happy Valentine's yeah, I'm Day. I'm waiting for my Necco wafer hearts from uh, from Rob to be hand delivered to my door. Absolutely. Uh, over the weekend. So door to door, how far are you guys? A mile. Uh, yeah, I mean, as the as the crow flies, it's like a mile, but because of all the winding right. roads, it's like about two and a half miles. Yikes. Well, yeah, not too far. Rob can get on a horse and drive over there. Amen. Yeah, you can go cross country. Yep. Cheers. Thanks, guys.